Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shabir Safi and in today's video, we are going to deploy HashiCorp Vault to our local Kubernetes cluster and we'll also learn how to deploy applications to Kubernetes that can authenticate to Vault and retrieve secrets. So let's get to it. Alright guys, so let's first understand the overall workflow of how Vault is going to work in our Kubernetes environment. We have three major components. We got HashiCorp Vault, our application or client, and Kubernetes itself, or more specifically, the Kubernetes API server. First, as an operator, you're going to set up and configure Vault. This will include multiple steps like initializing and unsealing Vault and configuring various components of Vault itself. But we'll talk about that in a few more minutes. Once the Vault is configured, an application will authenticate with the Vault by sending some sort of credentials. It could be service principal or an AWS credential or a username password. But in our case, we are going to use the service account token that is available to your application pod. After you send the credentials, Vault is going to validate those credentials. Now, it depends on what sort of authentication method you are using for your client and based on that vault will delegate the authentication decision to the relevant provider in this case it will be kubernetes api server once you successfully authenticate vault will generate a dynamic token and return it back to the client and after that for any subsequent request whether it is reading or writing a secret or fetching any other information from vault our client is going to use this token. And now we are going to deep dive into each step and we are going to implement them one by one. As part of Vault setup and configuration, we're going to do a few things. First, we are going to install Vault using Helm. After that, we are going to initialize Vault and then we are going to unseal Vault. So, Let's jump to our terminal and see how it's done. Okay, so first let's go ahead and create our kind cluster. You can find the link to the repository in the description box below, along with the gist of all commands and instructions for Vault. Once our cluster is ready, let's add the HashiCorp Helm repository. And now, Let's go ahead and deploy the Vault Helm chart with the default values. This will deploy Vault in a standalone mode, which means there will only be a single replica of the Vault server. Next, I want you guys to install a CLI tool for Kubernetes called Canines. And throughout this video, we are going to use it to interact with our Kubernetes cluster. So if you don't already have it, just use brew or any other package manager to install it. And let's open canines. Here we can see all the namespaces in our cluster. So now let's go to the vault namespace and hit return. And now we can see all the pods in our vault namespace. And if you notice, our vault server pod is running, but it's not ready yet. So we need to initialize and unseal vault before any client can interact with it. So hit S to shell into the pod. And now we are going to run vault operator init command to initialize vault. And as you can see, when vault is initialized, it generates unseal keys and a root token. Now remember that when vault is initialized, it is sealed by default which means you can't really do anything with it in terms of storing secrets or authenticating any clients. So we are going to unseal vault using these keys and let's copy one of the keys and run vault operator unseal command and paste the key. So we can see in the output it says unseal in progress one out of three. So we need to do this two more times with two different keys in order to unseal vault. So let's do this real quick.
as the last step for this part, we are going to log into Vault. So let's copy our root token that was generated and use Vault login and paste the token to log into Vault. And now type Control D to exit out of the pod. And we can see that our pod is finally ready. Okay, now that we are done with our initial setup, next we are going to enable the KV Secrets Engine. And this will allow us to store arbitrary secrets in Vault. There are two versions, V1 and V2, for this Secrets Engine. And with version V2, we can create multiple versions of the same secret. After that, we are going to create a simple secret. And then we are going to create a policy. Vault uses access policies to determine who can access which secrets and what type of actions they can perform on those secrets. Okay, so let's go back to our terminal. Let's shell into our pod first. And let's run Vault Secrets List to see already configured secrets engines. And by default, we have the cubbyhole and the identity secrets engine enabled. So now let's go ahead and enable the KV v2 secrets engine with vault secrets enable KV v2. And if we list the secrets engines once again, we have the new secrets engine available at the path KV v2. Now let's add a new secret. To do so, we are going to use the kv put command and after we need to provide the path to our secret. The path will start with the kv v2, but after that we can provide any custom path we want. And after the path, we are going to add the new secret as the key value pair. So I'm just going to use username equals Shabir. And let's use the kv get command with the full path to our secret to confirm that our secret is added. And here we can see that our data is there. And we also get some metadata information about our secret. So that's cool. Now we are going to create the policy. But before that, let's list all the current policies. By default, as you can see, Vault creates a default and a root policy when it's first initialized. So let's write a new policy. Here, there are two important things. First, you need to provide the full path to your secret in the policy. And second is the capabilities. So in this case, we only need read access to our secret, but you can add create, update, list, or many other capabilities as well. So let's create this policy. Great, now let's see what's next in our setup. Next, we need to configure the Kubernetes authentication so that Vault can authenticate our application pods with Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that. First, we need to enable the Kubernetes auth backend in Vault. This backend allows Kubernetes service accounts to authenticate and access secrets stored in Vault. Now that we have enabled the Kubernetes auth backend, we need to configure it to communicate with our Kubernetes API server. And primarily, you'll need to specify the Kubernetes API server's address. And in case you are wondering how we are getting these environment variables, know that in Kubernetes, each pod has access to a set of environment variables, which includes the Kubernetes service host and Kubernetes service port. These environment variables are automatically injected into every container running inside a pod. And you can use the print env command to check other environment variables as well. All right, we have completed most of the vault setup. The next step is to focus on configuring our application pod for authenticating with vault and obtaining the service token that vault will provide. We have a simple pod definition for this purpose. Here, we are utilizing a publicly available image that includes essential tools like curl and jq utility, which will allow us to parse the JSON responses that we'll receive from Vault. 
First up, we are setting the vault address. We are specifying the service URL where our vault is running along with the port number. Next, we are grabbing the Kubernetes service account token and each pod in Kubernetes has access to a service account token at this particular address. Now it's time to talk to Vault. We are using curl to send a post request to Vault. With this request, we are going to authenticate ourselves with Vault by passing the service account token above. And we are piping the JSON response that we'll get back from Vault to the JQ to parse it. And finally, we echo or simply print out the Vault response. All right, let's move ahead and deploy this pod. We have deployed the pod to the default namespace. And now let's hit L to take a look at the container logs in canines. And here we encounter an error message from Vault saying missing role. So let's deep dive into what's going on here and figure out how to resolve this issue. Our application is trying to authenticate with Vault, but it didn't provide a role during the authentication process. In Vault, a role is a fundamental concept used for access control and authorization. And as we know that authorization and authentication are two different things. So Vault doesn't know which set of permissions to assign to your application. And when that happens, Vault responds with a missing role error. So to resolve this, we are going to create a role for our application and we are going to add the policy we created to this role as well so that our application has access to the secret we created before. So let's go to the Vault pod and shell into our pod again. Here we can see all the policies we have so far. And now we are going to use this command to create a new role named vault demo for our application in the Kubernetes authentication method. It's gonna bind this role to the default service account in the default namespace since our application is using the default service account token. And also, we are going to add the my secret policy that we created before to this role as well. Let's go back to our application. And now we are going to pass the role parameter in our request. And let's redeploy this pod. And if we check the container logs again, we are getting a successful response back from the vault. And in the response body, as you can see, we are getting the service token as well, which we'll use in our subsequent requests. And now in our application, first, we are going to extract the vault token from the JSON response using JQ. Next, we'll proceed to retrieve the secret that we have previously created. To do this, we'll utilize a curl get request and we'll include the vault token in the request header and specify the full path to our secret stored in vault. And for the last time, we are going to redeploy this pod. Let's look at the logs now. And now, not only we have successfully authenticated with vault through Kubernetes, but we also are able to retrieve the secret we created before. All right, everyone, that wraps up this video. I appreciate your time and hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. Plus, if you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can find my profile in the description box below. And thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.